Here are 11 times that Luffy should have died in One Piece. I'm talking about times where death was a certainty and would have occurred if not for narrative shenaniganry. And we're going to start in East Blue with Don Krieg, a villain who doesn't get anywhere near enough credit and it took his near complete removal from the live action One Piece for me to really start thinking about just how important he is in the story. Case in point, the antagonist who always gets all of the credit for being the first one to really push Luffy is Crocodile. And we'll get to him, but the antagonist who should get this credit is Don Krieg. Krieg lured Luffy into the trap of fighting him above seawater, and even though Luffy destroyed Krieg's armor, he then cast an iron net, which Luffy could not escape from and would have drowned him. Of course, what Krieg didn't count on was Luffy managing to knock him out before hitting the water, but just as Luffy is about to plunge into the sea, he smiles. Not because he beat Krieg, but because this is a classic Will of D death smile. Luffy knew that this could be the end, but he was satisfied with his final action on this planet. But again, to give Don Krieg full credit here, he conjured and implemented a plan to kill Luffy, and if this was just a one-on-one -on -one fight without any spectators, then Luffy would be dead and Krieg declared the winner, after he woke up from his pain nap, that is. Now obviously Sanji then went on to save Luffy's life, good, good boy. But this is the first in a long line of events where Luffy is more than prepared to throw his life away, either for the sake of others or his own ideals, or even just not to let the bad guy have their way, we don't like that. Also, this video is sponsored by AFK Journey, a new RPG from the AFK Arena team, but not not just an idle game, available on the Google Store, iOS, and PC. Seemingly traverse this charming and vibrant world as Merlin, gathering heroes across six different factions, mixing and matching them to form winning tactics with different teams. This is an ethereal fantasy RPG, featuring stunning visuals, extensive diverse maps, incredibly fun puzzles, and effortless one-handed gameplay, or even no-handed. Just as it says in the title, you can play this game without actually playing the game. In fact, I'm playing the game right now as I record this through the AFK reward system. AFK Journeys of Official release is giving away over 40 heroes for free as a gift during the launch, including epics enabling players to explore diverse battle strategies, as well as a fantastic character customization system. Additionally, through gradual distribution and by engaging in events with a seven day login, players can receive 200 pulls. So you can and should check out AFK Journey through my link in the description. And you can also use my code AFKJourney88 to get 100 diamonds and 18,888 golden coins. And thank you so much again to AFK Journey for sponsoring this video. It's because of sponsoring Sponsors like them that we can afford to do fun things, like employ our channel artists and editors to bring you the best fictional pirate content possible as often as possible. Also, it's very difficult to argue with a game that rewards me even when I'm not playing it. So go do that thing, but for now it's back to you, me. But his fighting style is beyond reckless, and if Luffy wasn't the charismatic little ball of rubber that he is, then he wouldn't have even made it out of East Blue. In fact, even if he made it past Don Krieg, he would have died against Arlong in a very similar situation. In chapter 82, Luffy plants his feet into concrete and for Luffy, this was actually quite clever because it allowed him to gain solid grounding and swing around poor, poor Momu. But as soon as Luffy did this, Zoro says, I have a bad feeling about this. And strength aside, Zoro is a much more seasoned fighter than Luffy. He might not have necessarily known exactly why this is bad, but his warrior's intuition was raising red flags. And it wouldn't take too long to figure out why, because Arlong saw this as quite the easy dub, deciding to pick Luffy up and throwing him into the water, wearing a lovely pair of cement shoes. And so he would have drowned yet again, if not for Genzo and Nojiko stepping in. Slight side note, this is also the chapter where Zoro asks Harchan to quote, smash him, which is aged very interestingly with our modern lexicon. But looking back on it, I do think this is weirdly one of the scenarios that shows us how much Luffy has matured over time, because he doesn't get himself into as many of these instant death scenarios on a whim these days. That, or he's just so strong enough that it doesn't matter. In Logtown, it definitely did matter though, because in a manner best described as somehow involving a clown, Buggy managed to subdue Luffy Luffy and sentence him to execution via death. It's debatable, but I think this may be the closest anyone has ever come to killing Luffy themselves. Because Buggy was going for the head, not the head, he was going for the neck, so it would have been instant death. And he was this close to making it happen. And maybe if he didn't go to the trouble of making such a grand speech, it would have. The criminal MD Luffy is guilty of getting on his high horse and upsetting me. For that, he will be executed in grand style. Which I do think is a bit of an overreaction on Buggy's part. In reads more like an upset Twitter post. This man has upset me on the internet, so now I wish death upon him. And I also love that the Viz translation couldn't fit the monkey into the speech bubble and had to call him MD Luffy, as if he'd achieved his doctorate in medicine. But we know how this goes. Dragon saves Luffy at the last second. And it makes me wonder if Dragon this whole time was just standing there waiting for the right dramatic moment to strike. He's standing there enjoying the show with an angel dragon on one shoulder saying, you know, guy, you should probably save your son. But then the devil dragon on the other shoulder 
older is whispering, nah, Mace, let's let the clown cook. Whatever the case, Luffy should have died. Again, he put himself in a highly compromised position, advertising his whereabouts to the entire town and got jumped by the circus. For a slightly more heroic should have died moment, we move to Drum Island, where Luffy climbs up the tallest of the Drum Rockies with Nami and Sanji. Again, Crocodile gets so much credit for being the first antagonist to really push Luffy, but I think this mountain did just as good a job. Every time I go back to watching or reading this climb, it makes me feel phantom pain. The sound of the chilling winds, the blood from Luffy's fingers, and just the relentless, flat, vertical, oppressive nature of the mountain itself. And through sheer willpower alone, Luffy does make it to the top. But this effort was almost in vain, because as soon as he's done climbing, he begins to fall unconscious and would have fallen all the way back off the mountain if not for Chopper taking his hand at the very last second. And I want to give you all some stat numbers just to show you how bad this should have been. This mountain is 5,000 meters tall, meaning that Luffy climbed five kilometers carrying two people. Now the distance from the blue sea to Skypiea is 10,000 meters. So on Drum Island, Luffy climbed halfway to Skypiea carrying Nami and Sanji. Also for our US Nakama, in the Viz Manga translation, Dr. Kuriha says that the Drum Rocky is 15,000 feet tall, which is a nice round number, but doesn't quite do it justice because 15,000 feet equates to about 4,572 meters. And you might think, what's the big deal? It's just 400 and something meters, which you would think until you're the person who has to climb it. But if Chopper hadn't been there at the right time, then Luffy would have fallen and frozen to death at the base of the mountain. He probably wouldn't have been killed on impact because it's rubber, but rubber traditionally doesn't do too well against ice. Such is the situation where after asking Nami out on a date and presumably being rejected, Kuzan decided that the straw hats should all die. There's a bit more that happened in between those two events, but that's the gist of it. And Kuzan does have further reasoning because he goes on to say, I faced many ruthless villains over the years and you guys are starting to scare me. So our poor widow Mawin Admiral is getting a bit of a scare. But I will say that Kuzan's commitment to killing the straw hats is a bit difficult to decipher because once the punch fighting actually starts, he says that he didn't have any intention of taking their lives and whoa, what are you guys doing to me? But then when Luffy starts fighting, Guzan says that oh, he'll have to kill Luffy because he doesn't have a ship to transport a criminal. But then after the fight ends, Kuzan ultimately decides not to kill Luffy because he was a big help with the whole crocodile situation. So I don't know if this is 100% a scenario where Luffy should have died, but it's definitely a situation where he could have died. It's all entirely based on Kuzan's whims. All Kuzan needed to do was smash the icy, icy Luffy, thus turning his frozen goods into frozen bads, and the legend of Monkey D. Luffy would have concluded this very day. Imagine that. That would mean that Long Ring Longland would have canonically been the final One Piece arc. What a, what a high to go out on. But this all comes full circle because the reason why Kuzan didn't kill Luffy is because of Luffy beating Crocodile, which he wouldn't have done if Robin didn't save Luffy, and Luffy wouldn't have needed to save Robin from Kuzan if Robin hadn't have saved him from Crocodile, which is why Kuzan saved Luffy from Kuzan. It's a confusing cycle, so let's clear it up. One of the most iconic, oh shit, moments in One Piece is Crocodile skewering Luffy with his hook and leaving him to die in the quicksand. He should have died, that much is clear. But Robin saved him because of his middle initial, which at the time seemed like a slightly arbitrary criteria to make such a decision, but why not? But this was yet another situation where Luffy flung himself into a poorly thought out scenario and nearly paid the ultimate price. Although to Luffy's credit, one instance I don't count for the sake of this list is round two against Crocodile, because whilst Crocodile does dehydrate Luffy, it was Luffy's quick thinking that ultimately saved his life. So it's not a moment where he should have died because Luffy actually did something to step in to prevent it. He had control of the situation to a degree. However, he definitely should have died again in round three against Crocodile as Luffy was struck by his poisonous hook. Much like Don Krieg, Crocodile outright outsmarted Luffy and put him in a losing position. And also like Don Krieg, the only thing that Crocodile could not predict was Luffy's determination to beat him before that death condition took place. Before the poison could completely overrun his body, Luffy made sure to punch and punch and punch some more that their crocodile through solid bedrock before gracing Nefertari Cobra with another classic Will of D death smile and rather appropriately laying himself to rest in a tomb. But Robin was there to give him the antidote, so hooray, no, no die. But poisonings, mate. While we're here, we're gonna cover a few 
few more Luffy poisonings. Obviously, we had Magellan in Impel Down. Luffy should have died after being drenched in Warden Goop, but was saved by a combination of Okama. Luffy was also poisoned in the Udon prison because he decided to give all of the prisoners a nice big hug, and so he contracted the mummy plague created by Queen. And not to be outdone by his opponents, Luffy has also fatally poisoned himself by licking the goop off a fish when the Straw Hats were on their way to Whole Cake Island. Chopper even warns Luffy not to do the thing right before Luffy does the thing. And Chopper then goes on to say that he doesn't have enough vaguely defined medicine to save Luffy's life. Luckily, Reiju appears at that very moment, gives Luffy a good old slurp and gulp, even thanking him for the treat and thus saving his life. To which Brooke says, wow. And in this panel, you can tell that he's going over the logistics of poisoning himself to get the same Reiju treatment before realizing that he doesn't even have a body to poison. Yo -ho -ho -ho. Each of these poisoning instances is a moment where Luffy should have died, but I'm combining them all into one because no one, and I mean no one has the time to go over each and every situation where Luffy has been poisoned. That's a whole video series of its own. It happens so often. We will do one more sort of poisoning though, because it's a very unique way to die, which occurred on Amazon Lily. Finding himself starving to death after traveling by bubble for three days, Luffy starts eating, well, anything, including a funky assortment of mushrooms that have various emotional effects on him. He eats a laughter mushroom, an angry mushroom, quote, another weird mushroom. And when the Kuja tribe find Luffy, he's covered in mushrooms growing from his body, which will shortly result in a state of death occur. What actually happened is that Luffy ate the body parasite mushroom. All of the other mushrooms on Amazon Lily, apparently pretty tame, but Luffy did eat the one native mushroom that could kill him. And I will say that the treatment for this condition is pretty unpleasant. Plucking the mushrooms out isn't a huge deal, but to get the roots out of the body, the Kuja tribe set Luffy on fire, and were this not a fictional pirate comic, this would have resulted in some pretty permanent damage. But to make up for that, they then gave Luffy a bath and tugged on his man parts. It's one of those things that shows you just how dangerous the One Piece world is though, and how Luffy would have fallen victim to just about anything this planet has to offer and would be dead ever, ever so many times over without those around him to help. But Marineford was just around the corner and towards the end of the Paramount War, Marine Admiral Akainu was determined to kill Luffy. And this one uh, wasn't entirely Luffy's fault, but a series of, how shall we say, questionable decisions were made between brothers. Firstly, Ace was responding to Akainu's taunts about Whitebeard, which halted the intended escape, but it was Luffy who ultimately gave Akainu the opportunity to kill him when he dropped Ace's Vivia card. And instead of just leaving it, Luffy decided to bend down and pick the card up. So Luffy bent over, hoping that no nearby Marine admirals would witness this compromised position and attack him. And on this occasion, as well as several others, he got caught out. If not for Ace sacrificing himself, this is another occasion where Luffy should have died. And this time there was a particularly painful strain of irony mixed in because he was bending down to pick up the objects that represented Ace's life. And in doing so, cost Ace's real life, which then made the Vivia card burn up anyway. So Luffy ended up with neither a brother nor a piece of paper, net loss. I should also to say that this was a double death situation because even after Ace's sacrifice, Luffy still should have died due to all of the wounds he'd sustained and all of the Okama finger drugs he'd taken. But he was saved by the medical sorcery of Trafalgar Law. And this makes Paramount War the only saga where Luffy should have died in each individual arc. The mushrooms of Amazon Lily should have killed him. Magellan's poison in Impel Down should have done so again. Akainu at Marineford intended to take his life. And he also should have died from his condition in the post-war arc. And you know what? Luffy even should have died in the post-war flashback because he got caught by Porchemi who was intending to kill him and came within a buggy's dick of doing so before Ace and Sabo rudely interrupted his murder time. Also, I can never not point this out, but Porchemi's nose looks like a flaccid penis and because I can't unsee it, I'm choosing to curse all of you with this knowledge as well. But to another antagonist who doesn't get enough credit for nearly killing Luffy, here's Hody Jones. Because that's right, Luffy should have died in his very first fight against a new world antagonist. Despite how much of a joke Hody is in terms of strength compared to Luffy, the underwater arena leveled things out to a pretty serious degree and allowed Hody Jones to get a particularly vicious strike in that left Luffy fatally wounded. Now, like ever so many others before Hody, Luffy went on to beat him before succumbing to his wound, but he still should have died, which I point out because everyone's always like, ah, oh, Doflamingo this, or Katakuri that, but neither of them came closer to killing Luffy than the likes of Don Krieg or Hody Jones. But in order to survive, Luffy needed a blood transfusion, which is particularly problematic because interspecies transfusions, they're a bit of a taboo topic on Fishman Island. And unfortunately, everyone who had Luffy's blood type was a fishman. Luffy has a blood type of F, which is shared by Dharma, Wadatsumi, and interesting.
interestingly, Hody Jones himself. So I guess they could have performed some sort of non-consensual transfusion, but strolling in to save the day was Shark Daddy Jinbei, the only other known person on the island with type F blood. And as a bit of a fun fact, Arlong also has type F blood. So it's interesting that Luffy, his two fishermen antagonists, and his fishman crewmate all have the exact same blood running through their veins. It's almost as if it's some kind of theme that Oda's trying to explore. But there is another antagonist that has pushed Luffy to the point of should have died, and that is Kaido, who knocked Luffy unconscious and off Onigashima into the deadly some waters below. And this was quite refreshing because it had been a while since Luffy had experienced a drowning death. I know we started out this video with two of them, but then we took a big break. And in this case, Luffy's survival was due to using the voice of all things to contact a bunch of dudes in a submarine to come pick him up before he did drown. And that's 11 times that Luffy should have died in One Piece. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for consistent injections of One Piece culture administered directly into your YouTube feed.